Hi guys, this video is on India uh, in development dynamics and we're going to be looking at the case study which is um, India's growth and I'm going to look at three different parts of India's growth today. Now this is quite a big case study and it comes towards the end of the development dynamics section. Now India is also in the next unit but we're going to look at India here in terms of an emerging nation that's grown and reasons why it's grown and some of the impacts of it. So let's look at this then. Case study India's growth. Why has India grown so rapidly? So number one, uh, we've got some facts here. India is an emerging economy. And if you get asked in the exam about an emerging economy, you must use India. Please don't use Malawi. Um, some of the reasons why um, India has grown. First of all, it's got a very good location. It's close to Asian markets. It's close to Africa and it has links through the Suez Canal to the European markets as well. So it's pretty well placed to get goods in and out. English is spoken by many of the people in India. It used to be a colony of the, of the United Kingdom. So many people, English is the second language. So that encourages foreign direct investment because people speak English and so it's easy for them to get jobs. It's got a very large population. It's got one point, about 1 1.2 billion people and a very youthful population. So they're very good workers. It's got a democratic government, which means it's very stable. So TNCs aren't too afraid of locating in India because of any issues with labor or unions, etc. It's got a very healthy workforce in the main, those that live in the cities anyway. It's got about 200 million middle class people who are fairly educated, speak English and can do lots of different jobs, which we'll look at in a little while. Uh, India underwent economic liberalization in 1991. And if you remember, economic liberalization means that the government follows an open door policy, which means that uh, most of the uh, companies are not owned by the government anymore. They are owned by transnational companies or TNCs and the government allows TNCs to come to that country and invest in that country. And that's very good because it pays the government more taxes, etc. It means that the government, TNCs make more money, government makes more money as well. So in 1991, economic liberalisation occurred and this embraced FDI and TNCs. Uh, and lastly, we've got very good transport links to export goods and three parts to that. Shipping these days is very, very cheap. Very large ships can uh, economies of scale means that we can get lots and lots of goods on the ships and get them out all around the world. Containerization obviously has occurred, which means that we can ship any type of goods because the containers are very large and they can be maybe pressurized differently or different levels of CO2 or different gases or different temperatures. So we can move around lots of different goods. And finally, aircraft technology is reduced in price, so we can move around delicate goods as well. And we can get those delicate goods to and from markets quite quickly. So that is the reason for India's rapid growth. We've got lots of factors there if you're asked that in the exam. Now, the second part of this is the TNCs in India and the role of TNCs. Now, we call this outsourcing, and that's what you need to remember in the exam. So software companies we have in India, uh, we have a lot of call centers. We have accountancy and all three take advantage of very educated workers who speak English. So we get lots of quite highly skilled jobs occurring in India because we've got these 200 million middle classes, which is much bigger than the population, nearly three, four times the population of the UK, who are educated and, were, uh, um, and speak English. So TNCs tend to favour going to India because obviously labour costs are lower, etc. Land values are lower. So BT is an example. And BT is uh, an example of an outsourcing company that's gone there. And this area in software accountancy and core centers is what we call the new economy or the knowledge economy. And companies like this are footloose, which means they can basically locate anywhere because all they need are a couple of computers or a lot of computers, um, some phones, the internet. So they can locate in India because labor costs are cheaper, land value is cheaper. They have an educated workforce there who speak English. So it makes no sense to locate in the UK or elsewhere in Europe because labor costs are too high. So that is the role of TNCs. And finally, we're gonna look at the impacts of change. So because of these, this outsourcing, etc., we've had quite a lot of social change in India and economic change. So I'm just going to run through those with you. We've had a lot of urban expansion as more and more people from rural areas move to the urban areas to try to find jobs. Women have jobs now, many, many women. And so they tend to have children later. So fertility rates have decreased. And that has an impact on the population structure. 
because less children means that the population is moving, the pyramid is moving from a triangle shape, your normal pyramid shape, into more of a barrel shape. So that has implications for childcare, etc. And more and more people um, in that middle section of the population will move to the top in the future. And that will cause an aging population, which we know because we have in the UK and China suffers from that as well. So that's something that we're going to have to look out for in the future. Uh, there's a lot of social customs that have changed and that's to the better so there's less of a, of, um, a caste system um, in um, India so more people from a lower class are able to marry into a higher class so that's a positive thing that's happened and there's been a trickle down effect of this um, increase in jobs and opportunities and money because we've got better healthcare and education not only in the cities but also trickle down into the countryside so many some positives and negatives here on the economic side we have got higher wages, especially those middle classes. Um, even though wages are lower in India, it's still quite high wages for people to work in IT and call centres and um, accountancy. Better opportunities for people after university. Many low skilled workers in factories, however, so there's still a lot of manufacturing happening in India as manufacturing companies go there to take advantage of low wages. Um, however, there's some negatives here. This tends to drive down average wages. OK, because we have a huge workforce and many people want to move to the city. India's population is, is nearly 1.2 billion. So you have many people moving, unskilled people moving from rural areas to urban areas. So the fact that there's lots of people who want those jobs drives down average wages. So sweatshops are obviously common as well. And that's not a good thing. And many workers uh, means that average pay uh, is lower. So a few negatives here. In with economic change are mostly to do with low skilled people um, and low wages. Uh, so overall the economy is booming, it's one of the bricks remember, India's a brick and um, we have to remember that not everybody is uh, winning here so we do have some winners and some losers. So that is an overview of India's growth and why India in general and the cities have grown so rapidly.